What's up guys, this is Pete aka Characters and welcome back to the Carrot Poker Podcast. It's been quite the hiatus, but I am back with a new series which is called One Student, Three Hands. The idea behind the series is that I'm going to be bringing one of my students onto the show with three of, of his or her prepared hand histories and we're going to be going over them together and looking to find out, you know, some leaks in the student's game, what do they think of the hands, what do I think of their analysis of the hands. And going from there, so it should be pretty cool. I have not seen these hands before today when they've been sent over to me. So they're going to be new to me and you're going to just see how I, as a poker coach, um, basically analyse these hands from first sight. So I've got Marcus with me today. How's it going, man? Hey, man. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, how about you? Yeah, it's going all right. Thanks. I'm happy that I'm podcasting again. Yeah. Um, I guess the reason that I'm doing this is that I just feel bad as so many people like follow this podcast and then I stop producing content for a while because I'm lazy sorry guys but I think now that we've got a good series we can crack on with like I feel inspired again and re- like invigorated to to churn out some good content so before we do that let's talk a bit about you man so we worked together like a couple of months ago now that was the uh, end of our yeah, package yeah, yeah. Um, so how do you feel like, where do you feel like you're at in your poker career now? Let's give us an update. Um, well, I'd say that for now I've been playing quite consistently for, um, since the last fall. And so I've been able to put quite a lot of hands in Cool. and been able to get a nice win rate or like, like a positive win rate. So I think that's like giving me that kind of like, um, like the confidence that that it doesn't matter if I'm going a little down, so I know that I can yeah. still get it up, like <laughs> get it up, uh, like, <laughs> nice get, choice of words, yeah. <laughs> take it back up, you know. Yeah, what what comes down will come back up as long as you uh, yeah, continue exactly, to play yeah. your and I think that your that, solid game for that, like uh, coaching uh, with you has been really helpful. I think. Cool. Uh, well, I'm glad that the coaching was useful to instill a bit of confidence. Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think sometimes the mental game and the technical games are like so interlinked because it's really hard to have a good mental game when you're like flailing around and you have no idea what you're doing. And then as yeah. soon as things come together a little bit and you work with a coach and you get like some some really well learned patterns and you handle the common spots well, it can really just fill you with that kind of sense of stability that like your game's yeah, not exactly, just gonna yeah, fall definitely. apart. Yeah. <laughs> So you had a little venture through the stakes then. You had a bit of a whirlwind heater after coaching <laughs> and moved yeah. up a few times, right? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I was playing 10 and L mostly when uh, we were uh, like doing coaching. Yeah. And um, then I moved up to 25 and L and I didn't last. Uh, t- uh, I, yeah, I went on a pretty huge upswing. Sweet. And then pretty fast after that, I... Uh, took a shot of 50 NL and lost kind of badly there. And then I started losing at 25 NL as well. So um, in terms of 25 NL, it was probably like a 15 buying downswing or something okay. where I'm yeah. right now. So it's not feeling super great, but that's not uh, what you're supposed okay. to say. You're supposed to say, yeah, I just crush. I never have a losing session after coach <laughs> variance doesn't affect me anymore. That should Maybe be the answer. Yeah. You can, you can start over. If you, yeah, if you it's want. okay. We'll work on that. We'll work on that <laughs> for next time. Um, no, that's, that's cool. I mean, obviously it's a bit of a shame that things did go that way. Um, that you didn't just ride out the heater, but like, that's the thing, like you're not due anything. Chance doesn't have a memory, but over the long run, if you average it out, like you're not going to just crush for like 20 BB per 100. If you have a huge upswing, you are going to have like some size of downswing at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sure, kind of inevitable. Sure. Look at the bigger picture, you know, look at your graph over a bigger picture. Yeah. You know, at least and my graph seems to be very swingy anyway, so. Yeah. I mean, poker is swingy though. You're playing Zoom, yeah, right? Sure. So. Yeah, 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 I do. So if you're playing Zoom, Zoom has just so much variance in it. Like you're going to swing so much harder than someone that plays like regular tables on a fishy site like Sky Poker or something like that. Um, so that's the nature of the beast and as long as you are progressing in the right direction and you have over hundreds of thousands of hands like a solid win rate then that's what we're here for but let's on that note let's work on your win rate now let's work on your understanding of these three hands that you've um, come with prepared today we have I'm going to call hand one this hand with ace king so I've got it on my screen Mm -hmm. here not the screen that you guys can see on YouTube it's actually off screen um, to create an, a level playing field with the guys just listening to this. This is a podcast after tutorial, not a video. So I'll go through and describe what's actually going on here. So Hero is in the small blind here with Ace of Hearts, King of Diamonds. And it folds around. This is a 25 no limit hand. 
falls around to the button who min raises to 50 cents, which is pretty standard these days at 6 max online cash. Hero 3 bets to 4x, so to $2. And the big blind actually cold calls the 3 bets. So if you got any relevant player reads or anything that I should know about this hand before I just start going through the hand history? Um, no. Uh, well, um, the big blind is uh, is a twenty four eighteen. I have around two hundred fifty hands. Okay, so what kind uh, of range? See, it seems like kind of a reggae player. Gotcha. Yeah. So what kind and, of range? And, well, do you and well, the, the the button seems like a fish. The button, so the button's yeah. fishy, and the guy yeah. in the big blind is is fairly reggae looking. Okay. Fairly, yeah. So when a reg cold calls, first of all, I don't ever cold call in this position if I'm big. Yeah, player. yeah. So that makes me think about maybe he's more of a like a reg fishy kind of. I mean, it's just like way of now. Like people don't have the most refined strategies, so I wouldn't say that he's necessarily like fishy. But yeah. it's just pretty typical of a twenty five and L reg to not have read like the grinder's manual, where I would recommend in late position playing a four bet call or four bet fold game and not having this horrible capped face up calling range. Right. Yeah. Um, but they're not necessarily all going to play that way. They've not been trained by the same coach. They're not aware of all of the same things. So I do believe it's the best mm -hmm. strategy to play for about fold here. But you know, let's not jump to the conclusion that he's that bad a player. But he's probably yeah. not. You know, great. He's playing twenty five, no limit. Um, yeah. So he's not going to be like a mastermind with completely pre built strategies yeah. in every spot either. Yeah. Um, he actually has a quite a nitty three best three bet percentage. What's his three yeah. bet stats? Uh, five. Five. Okay. So that definitely. So we can probably do a fairly okay job of just ranging this guy right now. What hands do you expect to see cold calling here? Mm, I would say like middle to good pairs a lot. Um, okay. like stuff that uh they're gonna be kind of don't want to be for about calling. Yeah. So basically, like strong broadways. Uh, I don't know, something like sevens to jacks. Possibly. Probably this guy would flat jacks. Maybe he might even flat queens or ace king. Sorry? He might even flat queens or ace king if he's got quite a low yeah, three sure. bets. Yeah, that. He's yeah, yeah, probably yeah, not going to be four betting that much either. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty good inference normally that if someone's not three betting a lot, they're not four betting a lot. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we go to the flop of jack, jack, five, rainbow, no backdoor draws or anything here. We've just got ace king off. Um, and what do we think about, well, first of all, what's our range at this point? What do we have for value here and what would our bluffs have been? Um, well, we're three betting something like, uh, well, we're, we're three betting a, a quite wide linear range. Yeah. Sorry. So it's not as simple as bluffs and value. We are in the small blind here. Yeah. So we have a, we have yeah. a linear range that yeah. starts so, off at the top. I mean, yeah. for, for we would be betting something we we have jack 10 suited plus for sure yeah. i think we have queen queen jack off suit plus um and then obviously we have all the pairs from i don't know maybe like sevens and up yep sure so uh, something like that and then that leaves us with well um ace king ace queen uh still have quite a lot of showdown value so maybe something like king queen mm -hmm. and maybe maybe some uh, uh suited connectors i might free bet as well like i uh, got the higher ones eight nine nine ten nine sure so we are out of uh, so, position so those here. work as bluffs i think okay so we're out of position with this wide linear range villain has called us in position with what is a much stronger range because it's going to have like right. queens tens nines a lot more ace king like a lot more often he's yeah. very rarely going to have like air in this flop whereas we're going to flop a lot of stuff like eight nine and queen ten suited and just nothing right. so if you're out of position with a range disadvantage what right. would the normal strategy be there oh yeah then we should uh probably check a lot more right so we're doing a lot of checking good so yeah. i would actually recommend that we check everything here yeah because we but just don't yeah we don't have the nuts very often at all he has a hand that's yeah. not folding most of the time um mm. So when we're in a normal spot where we flatted a preflop open, we have like a range disadvantage, a positional disadvantage. We check mm. our whole range. I don't think this is much different. I would definitely start with a check with Ace King, but I'd check. also be checking yeah. everything else as well. So uh, okay, okay. Well, uh, is it is it really? Are we really in a in a in a range disadvantage necessarily? If like we we still have all the stronger pairs that he probably doesn't have. It depends if he flats uh, them ever. He might not. Yeah. He might slow play Ace's Kings like this yeah. sometimes. 
Um, yeah, I mean, we don't have a nut disadvantage. Like we do have a good amount of the nuts that he doesn't have, perhaps, but we have a lot more air, so we have a weaker range yeah, in the sense true. that we have nothing okay. far more yeah, often than villain does. I don't yeah. mind if you want to bet sometimes, like just with aces and kings here mm. because he shouldn't have many jacks and then bet occasionally mm. as a bluff and then check the rest. I think that would be fine as well. You don't necessarily have to bet nothing. Um, especially if you want to get three streets from stuff like queens when you've got aces, you know, you probably do. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't mind having a very small betting range, but like you say, you want to be checking the vast majority of the time here for sure. Yeah, okay. And you want to be checking a lot of hands that, you know, you can check call here also. Right, right. Like ace king is, is a hand that, okay, it doesn't block any of the pairs that he can have. It does block like the air that you'd have, like ace queen and stuff like that, but it does have a lot of showdown value. So if you want to check call this hand once, I think that would be probably defensible. And then yeah, check yeah. fold hands like ace queen and stuff that are just a bit weaker. Yeah. And um, yeah. would be okay. And also make sure that you're you are check calling like some better hands here as well, like perhaps kings, aces sometimes. Um I think your Jack X, you do have an advantage in the fact that you can have Jack X and he can't. So I probably yeah. stand corrected. He probably has like maybe ace jack, but maybe bro, that's push, kind of it. Yeah, maybe ace jack suited, which is two combos. But people aren't normally in the habit yeah. of cold calling a three bet with ace jack yeah. off. So yeah, I have so many jacks compared to him actually. Yeah. yeah, you do. So I think you have a nut advantage here. You have air a lot more, but you do have a nut advantage here. Yeah. So betting with like your jack x polarizing yourself is probably fine. Applying pressure with those, bluffing sometimes, but Ace King is not really going to be a bluff. It's got too much showdown value. Right. Yeah. So yeah, just check calling with the Ace yeah. King. Um, what about the idea of of say we were up against a player that we knew was a little looser, and yeah. we'd had want to have like some triples? Yeah, uh, I mean, you might even want triples here as well. Yeah. But you'd yeah, want to yeah. block a queen. You'd want him not to have pocket queens in that case. If you're discounting yeah. so maybe like king queen, some combos of Yeah, queen. exactly. Stuff like king queen that we block yeah. kings and queens, which are a bit more likely than aces, I think, the way this is played out pre um King Queen would be a good triple here, definitely. Yep. And I think you can triple Jack X. So I, I think you do want some triple bluffs here as well and like really put right. put some hands to the test like nines, tens, queens, which is the middle kind of showdown value y part of his range, like make him give them a decision with them, you know, do it in a balanced way. That's how you're going to apply the most pressure here. So right, right. I'd have a triple range, definitely. Yeah. I think he's king, though. It's blockers are not in the right place. You know, we're not trying to block a jack because we don't think yeah. he has a jack. Yeah. Anyway, we're trying yeah. to block pocket queens. Yeah, because so. this, this kind of like, uh, to me, like when I just briefly look at it, it looks like a good kind of a blocker hand because it blocks king jack and ace jack. Yeah. But it's probably not so relevant no. in this spot, though. If he doesn't have them pre in the first place, then they're uh, yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, or has very few. Right, exactly. So we check and the villain bets 287 into 450. So like half yeah. pot and we go with the check call plan, which I think is, is okay for sure. Yeah. We do have equity against his pairs and stuff like that. He shouldn't have a jack much. But and I guess like if, if the plan is that, or if, if the idea is that ace king is like just barely a check call, we're going to probably be like check calling like... An exploitative amount, I think. Sorry, can you say that last part again? That if 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 Ace King is barely a check call, yeah, meaning that we're check uh, no uh, check folding everything that's worse, yeah, which we have a lot of, then we're probably gonna be check folding like an exploitative amount. Well, like we're not much. necessarily check folding everything that's worse because we are gonna have a bluffing range as well with some of our worst hands. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so, yeah. Of course, of course. But still, that would probably mean that we. Quite often fold. Yeah, I mean, I think if you check call your over pairs here, like your like queens, jacks, maybe not queens is a bit vulnerable, but like kings and aces, if you check call those hands, you'll buffer that check call range, you'll make it a lot stronger, and then you can just use jack x as like your polarized kind of value betting range on that flop. Okay. I think okay. that would be fine in that way, yeah, you'll yeah, keep yeah. your check folds like somewhat in line. I don't even think it really matters if you are over folding, because I think the villain's range is just so defined as having something anyway like having a yeah, pair yeah. very often or having ace king when he doesn't have a pair that i don't think it's a disaster if we fold a few too many combos of like king 10 suited or eight nine or something like yeah that. yeah right i think it's okay right so yeah. on the turn two of diamonds nothing really changes nothing really changes it goes check check I guess we're expecting the population to give up quite a lot here if they were bluffing flop with king queen suited ace queen that kind of thing. We're probably expecting mm -hmm. a fair amount of give ups. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's why the the. I mean, I guess theoretically this could. I mean, is this still a call? 
I mean, I guess like if Ace King is the worst kind of check call, then this is a clear fault. Yeah, definitely. I mean, its blockers are completely point. wrong as well. Like you're blocking yeah. King Queen and Ace Queen, which are like the only hands he can be bluffing with, and you're not yeah, blocking yeah. much of his value range. So okay. flop is barely a check call, just because you. The only reason I check call flop is that Ace Queen is still twelve combos, which you dominate, and he may not bet with like pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket tens, right? So he might just be really polar on the flop to like Queens or Ace Queen. So I think you should call the flop, but I think on the turn, your blockers are wrong to call again with ace with ace king because you don't block his value range of queens, and you do block him from having ace queen. So right. I think the ace king, there's no need to call again with this particular hand. You're going to have like kings and aces in your flop check call range as well, which you can call with. Yeah, so I, think but, ace I mean, if, if we if we take out aces and kings, we probably bet the river though. Um. Are we not, sorry, what are we talking about here? Are we not talking about on the turn, like what our range would be for check calling? Oh, right. Oh, no, I, I just thought that like we were talking about like the river. Um, All right, I was saying river. like what we would do on the turn. Sorry, I, I was saying oh, like okay, turn okay, would okay, be sorry, a check sorry. fold. Right, on the river, yeah, of course, like we would be leading like kings and aces. Yeah, for sure. After turn checks through. Um, I was talking about like what we do against the bet on the turn there. Sorry, we got a wire right. crossed a little oh, bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the board just now is Jack Jack five deuce, um, with two diamonds. We do have the king of diamonds, not that it's massively relevant in this situation. We have check called the flop, turn has gone check check, and the river is the deuce of spades. So we check again with ace king, and villain actually bets three twenty five into ten twenty four. So he bets a third of the pot, and yeah. we decided to call on the deuce of spades. So the board is Jack of spades, Jack of hearts, five of diamonds, deuce of diamonds, two of spades. So double paired board now. We just have ace high. What do you think about villain's likely range when he bets so tiny? This looks like kind of face up exploitable, yeah, doesn't it, it? Like really screams something not super great, but once ace king to call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think this guy must have like queens really, really often here. Yeah, or tens or nines. We don't even block queens at all. I think we should we should definitely be folding some of our range here, and you know, like okay what we do with ace king now like our whole range is effectively just ace king combos at this stage because we would have led our aces and kings probably on the river yeah for value yeah. we don't have a whole lot else but can we just exploit that we just fold all of our ace king now because this is I just agree. so infrequently ever a bluff in this population yeah, 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 yeah so i think we can probably improve upon this by folding but we better skip on to the next hand i think now because we're okay. going a little okay. bit slowly yeah. Right, so I think fold is, is good, basically, just right. because they're just not going to bluff with that tiny sizing on that texture. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of what, uh, I mean, intuitively, it really looks that way, and in practice as well, yeah. probably it is that way. I think you'll be shown a, a bluff or a, a chop. I mean, what can even bluff that's not a chop anyway? It's not like you even really beat anything, you know? You're just kind of chopping the times that he is randomly. Yeah, around. yeah, yeah. So I think fold is, is correct there. Right, okay. Yeah. Right, on to the next hand. So we might just only get through two here, but that's not a disaster. Um, we're in the big line with King Queen of Spades now, and Button again. There's a min open here from the Button. What do we know about Button in this King Queen of Spades hand? Uh, only thing we know that it's a zero ten zero over ten hands. Is he fully stacked? Um, uh, he's fully yeah. stacked. Yeah, he is fully stacked. And okay. I, I'm not sure, like if. Actually, does does I guess does uh, Poker Tracker give like the uh, the stats that were at the time? Yes, it should do unless you've changed oh, that okay. setting. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So then it's ten ten zero over ten hands. Okay. Cool. So we three bet again a linear range in the small blind, which includes King Queen of Spades, and this time Button four bets. So he's open to fifty cents. We've three bet to two dollars and he's four bet to four fifty which i guess is like you're kind of slightly on the small side but standard ish yeah. um four bet yeah. sizing in position yeah and we elect to flat the four bet so i definitely think that when you three bet small blind like you do need to have some kind of flatting range against the four bet uh this is a big blind by the way oh this is big blind um, yeah yeah that's why i was a little uh surprised that you said like linear sorry yeah no i mean we'd yeah. start off I, I missed that so we're big blind not small blind sorry so we'd start yeah. off with more of a polarized yeah. range because we would be flatting a bunch of stuff in the big blind yeah yeah so i think i think this is kind of like a marginal three bet anyway uh for value against well yep. a 10 zero yeah i mean i think it's it's okay certainly calling against a 10 zero might be also fine just in case he does turn out to be really nitty against three bets it's a bit more likely yeah. with those stats that he will turn out that way 
than it would be on average. So I think it's okay, you know, to to flat here. It's okay to three bet here. Isn't there's not much of a difference. But if you do yeah. three bet king queen suited, then clearly it's too far up your range to fold against a four bet. Because yeah, especially if it's a little small. Yeah, so if you're going to three bet hands like this, it follows from that that you should have some flatting strategy against the four bet, right. like yeah. queens, jacks, sometimes. Yeah, aces especially against his sizing, it's kind of awkward to to five bet. It's not good to five bet because he's made the four bet so small that he's rendered better. Yeah. He's rendered it better for you to call and worse for you to shove due to the risk right. reward right. of shoving and the pot odds of calling. Absolutely. So what kind of a what kind of a shoving strategy would you? Advocate here. I would shove ace-king off, I would shove kings, I would shove... That's probably about it, and I would probably also mix in some shoves with hands that are not going to flop very well, like nines and eights and tens. Okay. And then okay. I would, I would my calling range would be like my suited broadways, obviously, that play really well, my ace-queen off, that doesn't do so well as a shove, like my aces sometimes, my ace-king suited. Just the hands that flop better are going to be better for you to shove. And the ha are going to be better for you to flat with, and the hands yeah, that yeah. realize good equity but are not so flop friendly are going to be better for you to shove with. Yeah, yeah. And you can yeah, mix in like some it. lighter hands like pocket sevens that makes a pretty bad flat, but it's in okay shape if it all goes in because Villain has Ace King a lot when he four bet calls here. Right, right. So I think that would be fine. Um, some strategy like that, how you uh, exactly mix it up is not a big deal, but certainly you wouldn't be folding King Queen suited or you'd be folding too much to the four bet here. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. So you're taking notes here, like good old coaching style. Oh yeah, yeah. So you, you <laughs> forgot we were recording. Uh, you're like in, in session mode now, like we're having a coaching uh, yeah, session. It's all good though. Like it, yeah. Feel free oh, anyway, to take notes. Anyway, we can we can uh, there, there's we can continue on the flop, I guess. Yep. So on the flop, we uh, we flat the four bet, and it comes deuce deuce six with none of our spades, two diamonds and a club. Yeah, and we check our whole range. We check our whole range, naturally, button checks behind. Now on the turn, it's a seven of spades, so the board is seven, six, deuce, deuce, with two diamonds, we have king, queen, yeah. spades. What is our strategy now? Like, we um, need to lead something, right? We need to have some kind yeah. of bluffing range at this point. I feel like, um, I think I might be even just flatting king, queen off, pre. Yeah. So... And, and I'm not doing this with like queen jack suited or king jack suited. So this is actually like our worst hand. Sure. Can you give me a second? I'm going to pause the video, the podcast, because yeah, sure. I've locked my girlfriend out of the house. Then we're going to yeah, resume. Yeah, sure. So you guys at home shouldn't notice too much. Yeah. Right. I'll pause that. Be right back. Okay. All right, guys. Sorry about the minor disturbance there. So on the turn, seven, six, deuce, deuce. And we're considering like what kind of leading strategy we're going to use here. So what do you think? Um, well, considering that king queen doesn't really have that much uh, showdown value, and it's still actually I think it has some relevant blockers. Um, I think this is a kind of a good hand to use as a bluff. Yeah, I think I'd be inclined to agree. Like villain could be uncapped at this point, right? He could be like checking yeah, back yeah. some big hands yeah, on this flop. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't know how this guy plays, but if I was him or her, uh, I would probably check back with like aces and kings. Like, yeah, like the more, I guess, the less sometimes. vulnerable hands. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, queens and jacks maybe would be betting flop for protection or whatever, but like aces is certainly a hand that can afford to be put in the checking back range on six deuce deuce in a four bet pot to like strengthen up that range for sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so, so that was kind of like also what I was thinking and uh, um, but the other 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 one was that like um, what kind of value would we have here? Yep, good question. So what do we flat the four bit with? Well I said we can probably mix in some combos of aces to flat with. Yeah. Pre. Like to strengthen that range. Um and potentially like some combos of things like jacks or I mean jacks is getting kind of thin at this point to just bet that twice. But you've got to remember villain does have like yeah. ace kings and stuff that also play this way. And he's probably more likely to have like ace king than he is like kings or queens or aces or something like that. So how wide do we want to go here? I don't know, I think it depends very much on our pre-flop strategy, but we could have some combos of aces mm. that we can also play this way and like lead with for value now twice and just try and get all the money in. We could have all aces. We might always flat aces pre here to strengthen that calling range up and they can be balanced with some bluffs, but we need to make sure that we don't bluff too much here. Mm. But I think that's okay because I don't think we have too many hands that actually 
are lacking in showdown value. King Queen is very close yeah. to the bottom of our yeah. range here. Yeah, like if we have Ace Queen, we don't feel too bad just checking down. No, we check down. We lose most of the time, but we need to control yeah. how often we lead as a bluff. You know, we can't just like lead this turn whenever we feel like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I mean, even if we if we just bluff these four combos, it can't that be, can that be bad. fine. Yeah, and then six combos of aces or whatever. Yeah, um, and then yeah. I think you've got an okay leading strategy. I think you are going to check most of the time on that turn. Yeah, I think if you got jacks or tens or something. Like, it is going to be, like, fairly... You could bet once with those hands, I guess, then check river. It wouldn't be a disaster. Um, or you could just go for... The problem is, like, it's not going to be very good to check call a hand like tens because villain is very rarely just going to have, like, some kind of air. Like, he's usually mm -hmm. going to continue checking ace, queen, ace, king and just bet with, like, stronger hands a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, but that said, you know, he has four bet pre. He could have some four bet bluffs in his range, like ace, five suited or whatever or King Queen himself and could be range checking the flop and wait until the turn to bet. So no, maybe yeah. maybe there is some merit to check calling a hand like I don't know, like tens or jacks on the turn. Yeah, it'd be quite polarized when we actually bet here. It's a very tricky right, spot yeah. you've you've given me here. Like a four bet pot is always like incredibly hard to to balance your strategies. Even yeah, though you're yeah, only yeah. working with it a is, small range, it it's it's a tough spot to yeah. to divide it out. And it's not obvious. But I think yeah King-Queen strikes me as a hand that we should start bluffing with. The blockers, like you say, are really good. And, yeah, we can... It's, there's only four combos of King-Queen suited, so it's not going to blow our bluffing range too much on this turn. Yeah, yeah. Right, so we do lead for 375. Now, stacks that are remaining on this turn card would be... I mean, you're, what, like $22 deep or something? Still? Uh, yeah, where, there, where effectively there's a pot size bet left. Be more than that, surely. Um. Or no, no. It's uh, it's actually uh, exactly that, actually. But you're both fully stacked pre-flop. Uh. Yeah. So before you bet the turn. Yeah. You've got a pot of nine dollars. Yeah, and we're effectively twenty dollars. Right. So you've got like double the pot. You've got two pot size bets left before you bet the turn, right? Yeah. Okay. So. With that being the case, then, your sizing on the turn should set up a river shove. Yeah, yeah. So you should set it up so that you can shove the river, so you can bet, like, you know, four or whatever on the turn and achieve that. Or you can bet a little bit larger, just as long as you set it up so that you can jam the rest in the river. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. But given that if we're only, like, uh, shoving aces here, yep. then it kind of makes sense to for it to be, like, a big bet, I guess. I mean, the, normally, if you're shoving a polarized range, you can leave like a bigger bet for the river. Like it's fine. Um, your range is not just going to be aces when you shove the river. Like what I'm saying is, like if you bluff king queen in the turn, you should also shove river as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, know? and then do the same. I, with aces. I, I definitely agree. Uh, in hindsight, yeah, like I think my my problem though was that I I realized that this is like a really weak hand on the turn, and I need probably some bluffs. But when the turn came, I was like thinking like. Um, well, first of all, I was constructing my 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 pre flop play very differently than you, I think. Yeah. Because I wasn't thinking of of flatting aces. Okay. So um, I was really struggling. Like, what do I what like you have for value? Yeah. yeah. Sure. And and I just didn't. I was thinking like I don't know, like tens. Would I do I even want to bet tens? And I just I don't know. Checked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you are that cap, I think it makes a lot of sense to be checking like all of your range on the river. Like, I don't think you can really have a, yeah. a range that goes yeah. bet jam if you are that cap because yeah. you just wouldn't have a value combo. Yeah, you could play that way. So anyway, the board is deuce deuce six seven, and the river comes a two of hearts. We bet three seventy five into nine ten on the turn, and villain calls, and then the river is the <laughs> deuce of hearts. So at this point with King Queen, I think given the way that I've constructed my range here, I would be shoving um, yeah. and also shoving aces. And it's okay because I'm not actually bluffing all that often. If I shove for about pot or just under, then I can have two to one value hands to bluffs in my range. So that would entail shoving six combos of aces and shoving sometimes when I've got shoving like three of my four King Queen combos or something like that, um, yeah. which would be a balanced strategy. So I think... The lesson here is the way to pick a balanced strategy in a 4-bit pot is to consider what are my value combos and then how many bluff combos do I need to create like a kind of balanced range there. Yeah, um, yeah. That'd be the way to do it. And king-queen is like yeah. literally the bottom of your range, so I think yeah, that exactly. makes yeah. sense. Right, we better wrap up because we've been going for half an hour. Um, okay. But 
Sorry we didn't go into your third hand, but loads of detail no, on those okay. two. Okay. Thanks for coming on the show, man. We'll get you back on in future and get you to Oh, yeah, definitely. This. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for this. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope your next yeah. shot at the higher stakes um, at 50NL goes a lot more smoothly. <laughs> yeah, hope so, hope so. <laughs> All right, dude, take care. All you guys Bye. out there, thank you for listening. We will be back regularly now. I'm in the process of writing a new book. Loads of details to come. My old book is still on sale at carrotcorner.com, the Grinders Manual. Still very relevant um, to the games and yeah, lots of other stuff on that site. Still coaching as well, so just hit me up. My email is admin at carrotcorner.com. Um, if you want to get in touch for podcast ideas, you want to be on the show, you want coach, you want info about the book, whatever, just shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you guys. And until then, I'll see you on the next podcast. Thanks for listening.